Hello friends, I'm Steve Willis and today we're looking at the ACCA strategic professional exams. We're looking at the spreadsheet tool and we're looking at five functions that you should master before you attempt your first exams. Okay, so have a watch, open up the practice platform and you can follow along. Link is below for the practice platform. Let's get started. One of the first differences you'll notice when you move up from the applied skills exams is that you will choose which response option you would like to use. In your applied skills exams, they gave you a spreadsheet or they gave you a word processor. Uh, here, you need to choose. The second thing is that you will be given many exhibits. And when you check out those exhibits, if you are given something that is numerical in a spreadsheet, you can now copy paste that into your answer, which is very helpful. Now, there are many, many specific tips for each exam. Your homework after you watch this is to go onto the ACCA website, find the paper that you are sitting this session, make sure you watch the really, really well produced exam technique videos that are there. There are four of them per paper. That is a must watch for you. When you open the spreadsheet tool and you start working in it, you will be relieved to see immediately that it is the same tool that you used in your applied skills exams. So all of the exam technique you learned in the lower papers applies to these exams as well. Make sure that you present your work in a step-by-step -step manner. Allow the marker to give you the own figure rule. If you make a mistake, the result that has the mistake will be assumed correct for the rest of your work. So really important to break things down into step-by-step -step approaches. And here's a, here's a feature that's underused. You can zoom in. And in the professional, the strategic professional exams, guys, you might be working with some pretty big spreadsheets, especially in AFM or APM. So you can zoom in and zoom out. That's also helpful because you'll be managing several windows at the same time. So maybe you want to zoom in or maybe you want to zoom out. Don't forget that we can also double click on a column separator to auto enlarge that column. All right, what do I have on the board here? We're looking at a typical investment appraisal challenge. We've got years. We've got the profit before interest in tax. Okay, we've got tax at 30%. We have non-cash expenses of depreciation that we need to add back, and we also have a cash flow line. This is something that you could find in APM, something you could find in AFM, and even in SBL, you are required to work with discounted cash flows. Let's not forget strategic business reporting as well. Okay, so Let's look at the NPV function to help you make really quick work of discounting your cash flows. So if I want to calculate the NPV of this project, guys, I'll make a section heading here for NPV. This is the first function that you need to know. Okay, so how does an NPV work? Well, you know, we need the discounted cash flows of this project. So have a look at this. I can just open up a row discounted cash flows and I can use the NPV to make quick work of this. So I will now open up the equal sign type NPV open up a paragraph uh, a, a parentheses and first argument will be the discount rate or the cost of capital of that company. So we can just click on that cell using our relative cell addressing. You could also just type 0 0.125 into that cell and get the same thing. Hit a comma. Now I will grab the range of cells that has those cash flows I'm looking to discount. And there we go. Okay, that's much easier than doing it by hand. 
if we want to finish up this NPV, we need the initial investment. And again, we can use our relative cell addressing to grab that number. And the sum function that you know and love from your other papers, okay, is going to be really helpful here. So now NPV will be the difference between these two. And we get a negative 55,000 and change. So we will reject this project using NPV. Remember, in the strategic professional exams, the verb is unlikely to be calculate. It's more likely to be assess, critically assess, evaluate. Okay, so bring this number back into your word processing document. And if you need to discuss it, you'll do that in the word processing document, guys. Let's now clean up the formatting a little bit here. You know there are no marks for formatting, but I am going to just clean this up to make it easier for the marker to follow along with what I'm doing and to make it easier on my own eye. And we want to be professional, so let's be professional whenever we can. Presenting our numbers in a standard way is the way to do it. The second function that you should know how to use is the internal rate of return function. That comes up in many exams. And you no longer need to do that manually. You can use the built-in functionality. So, so for the first step for IRR, let me restate my years, okay? So I've got years zero, one, two, and three. It's going to help me stay organized. Now, in year zero, we will put the negative initial investment. That's that 6,000. Okay. And I will use my nice relative cell addressing to grab the other cash flows there. And I can drag that across, loving the power of the spreadsheet tool. All right, and if I would like to calculate the IRR, I simply need to use the function equals IRR, open that up, and grab my range of cash flows. And that works either horizontally, okay, or vertically. So I don't need to grab the years, I just need to grab <clears throat> the cash flows. Close out that parentheses, and there I go. Let's show that as a percent. And look how quickly that quick that went. Really, really helpful tool. All right, the third function I'd like to look at with you is modified IRR. Okay, modified IRR. This is a topic that is in both the APM and the AFM syllabi. No longer do you need to do this manually with your calculator. Do it in the spreadsheet. Okay, so I've got my discounted cash flows here. Um, let me open up the modified IRR function with an equal sign. Okay, equals MIRR. It's similar to IRR with two additional arguments that we put into our function. So we open the parenthesis. I grab the cash flow. I can borrow it from the IRR, which is right above. So I grab the, the four cells. Now I put a comma and I need the financing rate and the reinvestment rate. So I can now zoom out of there. Looks like I lost it when I zoomed. So let's start over. That's equal to MIRR. Open up my parentheses. Grab my cash flow. Grab my financing rate. Grab my reinvestment rate. And there we have modified IRR. Really easy, really fun in a way, okay? In a, in a strange way, it's kind of fun, at least for me, to do this in the spreadsheet tool. Okay, there you have it. Know your discounted cash flow functions. NPV, IRR, modified IRR. Let's look at two functions 
that will help us in decision making under the domain of management accounting. And I've got two spreadsheets prepared for you. Let's use this very handy zooming in feature, guys. My first table, I've got a profit table. I've got a three products, okay, with a range of de different demands with different sales that I will achieve at that each level of demand, a different variable cost and the fixed costs, okay, for each decision, which gives me a profit, guys, right here. Let's clean that up with nicer formatting. So I have a range of cells here in the profit, and I would quickly like to find the, the, the biggest result. And I can use the function max. This will help me very quickly do something like um, the maxi max decision rule in APM. So check this out. If I would like to know the biggest number in here, I can just go max, okay? And that will be equal to the max function. Open up my brackets, grab any range. There I go. It finds the biggest number. That's really helpful. Maybe I go back and I change something. Maybe I discover I made an error somewhere in here. Okay, and that'll help me do that quickly. Guys, have a look at this. If I come to another table here, look at this. In column B, I've got three production levels that I can choose. I can choose one two or three thousand units. That's my decision. Now I have some uncertainty as to what the demand will be. Everybody look at that, different demands. So I'm trying to calculate my sales in column D. So it's always going to be the smaller of the two, right? If I produce 1,000 and demand is 1,000, that's going to be equal to 1,000 multiplied by 15. Now if I go to the next one, uh-huh, that's going to be equal again to the smaller of the two. That is equal to 1,000 times 15. A bit slow doing it this way, guys. Now when I get down to the second product level, okay, ooh, now the smaller one shifts to the next column, right? So that's the demand is smaller than production. It's going to be multiplied by 1,000 again times the 15. Slow and awkward. Watch what I can do. I can now use the minimum function to grab the smallest from any range of figures. Look at that. Minimum. And that's going to save me time. Guys, you want to save time in your ACCA exams. Okay, that is the minimum function useful in the maxi min decision making rule which you could find in advanced performance management. Okay, friends, there you have five functions to practice with in the practice platform. And it's really important you work in the practice platform, not only Excel, because you will not be given any autocomplete or any hints with functions. So if you're going to use those in the exams, practice with those in the practice platform. Guys, I hope you found that helpful. Please subscribe. If you liked that, you can get more videos. And Steve signing out. Bye for now. Good luck on your exams.